Hi, and welcome back to my channel. This is Exploring the Outdoors, and I'm Tim. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Onyx Off-Road for this really nice shirt they sent me. I completed uh, one of their little submission deals they had. You get to do submit two submissions in a certain month, and you got a free shirt. And I got a free shirt, and it's a really nice shirt, too. So thank you very much, Onyx Off-Road. Uh, so for this video, a lot of people, um, wintertime camping and stuff, uh, there's... You see it in all the groups, there's always debates on buddy heaters, uh, which are propane, or the diesel heaters, or whatever, you know. There, no, some people are saying no heaters, and it's whatever, and uh, I've been kind of tinkering with the little project that I got for uh, the tiny little, uh, like, office heater, like a little desk heater, it's like a 200 watt heater. It actually runs about 191 to 193 watts when it's running. But the problem I ran into was is um, my EcoFlow was a small power unit and this thing eats up 190 watts constantly. So I ended up buying what is called an Inkbird, which is, I don't know, I guess they use them for like uh, greenhouses and stuff. And it's a temperature controller. So you can plug in a heating and a cooling device on there and set a temperature range. And you can set the, um, the range in which it's gonna kick on and kick off. I have mine set for 70 degrees and kick on and off at 65. Well, kick on at 65 and kick off at 70. And so I incorporated that and that extended the time a little bit more, made it a little bit more efficient. So once it gets to the certain temp I wanted it at, it starts cycling, which was cool. That works, but it still wasn't enough power. So I came up with a way to hook my 100 amp hour lithium battery to my EcoFlow. Basically, I made an adapter to hook from the positive and negative of the battery and plug it straight into the solar port on the EcoFlow, which is an XT60 connector. And that would trickle charge my EcoFlow at like 150 watts, 155 watts, somewhere in there. And still, I was about 34 watts shy of being equivalent to or greater than what the heater was drawing. So no matter what I did, the heater was going to pull the EcoFlow down all the way before the 100 amp hour lithium battery was drained. So what I ended up doing to solve this problem, and that's what we're going to do tonight, is I'm on, um, it's actually cool enough out here in Texas, finally, that I can probably get a decent test out of it. It's 43 degrees and it's supposed to, it says it feels like 39. So what I came up with is on my 100 amp hour lithium battery, I built me a booster to go 12 to 24 volt at 10 amps. So that's putting out 240 watts through an XT60 connector into the side of the EcoFlow. So I'm essentially charging the EcoFlow at about 196 watts now because it has a 200 watt max. And, you know, doing the math with the amperage and the volts going into it, it kind of next it down to about 196 watts. Uh, I've seen it spike up to 208, but it comes right back down. And so this would be the first long-term test I get to do with it. And I have a temperature sensor called a Govi. I was going to hang up inside the tent so I can graph it on my phone uh, to show you all what it does as far as the graph and cycling on and off and whatnot. And, and uh, we'll just let it run until it's dead and see what kind of runtime we get out of it. I'm, I'm hoping to get at least eight hours out of it, which would be pretty cool. I mean, if you get eight hours while you're sleeping, that'd be pretty good for a little electric heater. And it'd be another option for people that have a small power station to build a booster power station capacity from like say 288 watt hours to 1500 watt hours just by adding a cheap 100 amp hour lithium battery. So we're going to get this tent opened up and we're going to get everything set up and I will run you through the setup real quick before I fire it up and show you where the temperature sensor is hanging, the thermometer is hanging, the, uh, the thermal couple is hanging and we'll get everything going and see what happens. Hopefully eight hours. We're shooting for eight hours. So here we have the 100 amp hour 12.8 volt power queen battery this battery is roughly around 1250 watt hours it's fully charged I charged it up in the house over the last two days it's connected with these clamps going up into the tent right here and inside the tent 
we have that's the uh, solar charge controller that run that has the switch built in for running a load for the 12 to 24 volt booster right here it's going to put out 240 watts into the EcoFlow which was sitting at 75% so I have it charging right now because I, didn't, I want to start this with both of them at 100% and then over there you can kind of see the Inkbird temperature controller right there and that is the little Mr. Heat little office heater it's an on off switch there's no thermostat or anything like that on it and it puts out decent heat and so up here you can see that's the Govi temperature sensor hanging right there that's going to relay all the Bluetooth information to my phone. And I don't know if y'all can see it, but right here, let's see, yeah, you see it right here. This is the uh, temperature sensor for the Inkbird to tell it what temperature it is in here. So as soon as the EcoFlow is charged up, we will put it in here, plug in the Inkbird to it, and plug the booster into the solar port and we'll commence the test. We'll close the door down and uh, just let it run. See what we get. All right, so as you can see, I got the EcoFlow. Technically, it's not 100%, it's at 99. I don't think 1% is gonna kill us on this little test. So, we're gonna get it set up real quick. We'll get the, right over here where I can see. We'll get the, bird plugged in there. And then I need to get the XT60 connector for the booster plugged in here. All right. Now, I'll bring y'all up here and give y'all a shot because, like I said, it's at 99%. So as soon as I kick that booster on and turn the heater on, it should start putting out and charging at the same time. So, come on. All right, so there you go. It's at 99%, 99 hours, All right? So when I kick the button on over here to turn the inverter on, all right, there we go. The temperature thing came alive it says it's 43 degrees in here and it's set for 70 the heater is on and so we can see the power it'll go up to 200 and it's gonna come back down I put this where you can see better and we'll let it come down and stabilize I'll show you all where it's at and then we'll kick the booster on It's about 193. It usually runs around 190 to 193. Is where it hangs out at. So we'll go ahead and kick on the booster over here. Booster came on and we should start seeing it charge. There we go. Now I wonder if it's doing that because the, the, the cycling on and up and down like that because it's at 97%. So as we sit here and watch, the watts coming in keeps going up to 200 and back down to zero and stopping and it starts back up and it keeps repeating this cycle over and over and over again. And I thought that's really weird because when I did this before it stayed steady at like 190 to 200 watts it didn't do this fluctuation like that 
And what I ended up finding was is I had the battery plugged into the solar port on the charge controller and not the battery port. Once I plugged into the battery port, it stayed constant. And you can see in this time lapse that when it kept running up and down, not staying constant, it was draining the EcoFlow fast. All right, so I came out here to check on everything in the tent. It warmed the tent up to 64 degrees in here. I think it's just a little hard for this little heater to bring this temperature up to 70 in an uninsulated tent. So I lowered the tent down to 60, and we'll see if it works better at that temperature because realistically, if you got blankets and stuff, you could be in this tent without a heater right now. The heater would just make it a little bit nicer. So, I mean, you could actually put it down to like 50 just to bring it up some so it's not like so cold. But I'll show you what is going on right now. I mean, you turn the camera here. So you can see the bottom number here, that's the room temperature that I set it to, which is now 60. And it's at 63.3 coming down. And the heater is actually off right now. No light on. And over here, see it was continuously pulling constantly. Well, this number here, the input, kind of fluctuates up and down. Right now I'm sitting at 199 watts coming into it with no watts going out, or one and I'm actually charging back up now so as soon as that thing hits 55 it's going to kick back on so it's going to give it a little bit of time to charge this back up then the heater will kick back on and we'll see if it maintains at that point because there's going to be a threshold between how cold it is outside and just how much warmer this little heater can bring the inside of the tent it's not going to bring it up like where it's really super warm inside the tent. It's a little bitty heater. But it's a fun little test to try and see what's going on. So I mean, even if it was like 25 degrees outside, you could do this and bring it up to say 40 or 45 and make it feel a little bit more comfortable in the tent while you're sleeping in your sleeping bags and stuff. Just another alternative to the heating sources. All right, well, we'll let it keep running for a little while, and we'll come back to it. And that one right there is currently at 61.8, going down. All right, so it's currently about 3 a.m. in the morning, and I just checked my EcoFlows app, and it showed it was drained all the way. So I believe the heater is off. Everything's dead now. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we'll check it out real quick, and then I'll add up the time and tell you about how long it ran for. So let me get inside the tent. All right, so we're inside the tent, and yes, everything is off. Uh, here, we'll turn it around to show you the thing. All right, so that stuff is definitely off. The EcoFlow is at 2%. It's got no power coming in, so that means the uh, lithium battery's dead. And what we got over here on this little guy here. So my lithium battery is showing, oh, it's flashing, so yeah, it's out of power too. It's toast, so, <sighs> yep, everything's good to go, and so, oh, let me get where I can see, where y'all can see me. So, we started this experiment at 8 o'clock in the afternoon, 8 p.m., and it is now 3 a.m. in the morning, so we got about seven hours of run time out of it. I was shooting for eight. I got close. So, yeah. I mean, not too bad. I mean, get seven hours of heat with that thing. So, I still prefer my diesel heater over all the options, but this was just something to play with. I've seen some people talking about they don't like using diesel heaters and they don't use like they don't like the buddy heaters because of carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. So I figured I'd play around and see what I could do with a little electric heater. I got seven hours. Not bad. But my diesel heater goes for days on the freaking two liter tank of fuel on it. Way better. And way warmer. So that'll be it for this little test. 
I'm going to pack all this stuff up and uh, call it a night.